Hello YouTube. I've got this nice full-length mirror that I need to hang today. And it is a 66 inch mirror, 24 inches wide. Now all I have so far is this to hang it from. Okay, this mirror has been purchased and tried before, so I got it second hand. And uh, this is all that it has is one hook here and another hook on the other side. So it needs a strap that will kind of go like an arch from side to side. And so that's what I purchased this for. This will hold 300 pounds and the mirror is probably about 10 pounds. <laughs> Okay, I, I have never hung a mirror from a cable before. Anytime I've ever hung anything, it has hooks on the back. So here is the cable that I got, and it is a 300 pound cable. And then I needed to something to clamp the ends together. And so I found this, I had to ask for it. This is uh, maybe too big now that I look at it, but if I can get this to crimp down on that cable, I think it'll work for a cable lock pretty good. So I'm gonna need to squeeze it with the biggest thing that I've got is gonna be either that or this. And then to cut that cable, all I have is this. And so that I don't split the wood, I can assure that by using a um, drill that is smaller than that shank. So it's inside the thread area, so I'm good. And then to keep, since this is beveled on the edge, to keep this thing, the mirror from sliding off, I'm going to add a simple little washer and that'll give it a square edge and then the mirror won't slide off. Okay. This is a 300 pound test line and it's pretty stringy. So it's got a lot of tinsel in it. All right, now that I got it unraveling, I can pull it out past its ability to come back again. And then I'm going to pull it through my hand with my thumb bearing down on it in the opposite direction of the curl. And look at that, it's straight. So now I wanna measure that distance that I was talking about, which is about there. Let's cut it. I'll definitely have leftovers. I think there's nine feet here, I can't remember. All right, so I'm putting it down at the very bottom where it will have the strongest bite. And let's see how these snips do. Oh, no problem. All right, so I'm gonna try the left side first. And uh, I got them out of their bag. As you can see, there's a way for it to go in and a way for it to come back out again. And it's that simple. And then this ring goes on it first. And I had no clue what it does. Maybe it just keeps things straight. All right, here we go. One through there, one on here. The other one goes through like so. And then the ring goes on. And they go this way. Looks good. So I don't have to go all the way down. Yeah, this is definitely the wrong size cable for this. I'm going to have to really get grip down on it. But here we go. I think I'm ready. How well will this crush? Oh, I won't crush at all. <laughs> oh boy. All right, so this thing here is a whole lot more tough than I anticipated. So I've gone down to trying my vice grips. Probably about that big. Here we go. Ugh. This thing demands a specific tool. I can't imagine that these square pliers are going to squeeze it any harder. 
Let me try it at an angle. Oh, no way. Hmm. Interesting. Lesson learned. They actually sold these in a smaller size. I should have taken my cable with me to the store because uh, I rough guessed it and I missed. Okay. The proper way to do this is go to the store and get smaller ones. Or tie it in a knot. That looks like it'll hold, but I don't want to go by look, so I'm going to get my soldering iron and see if I can solder this wire. Okay, we'll Paul call this flux here. Get a little dab, about that much. We'll call this the flux capacitor. Okay, let's see how hot this here harbor freight soldering gun gets oh wow it's hot it's real hot okay if it'll get this cable hot enough for this stuff to flow it's glowing wow that is really, really hot. It's glowing and it is flowing. Wow. Okay, ladies and germs, it has cooled off and get the fire. Yep. <laughs> that is a good solder. That's not going anywhere. Get the other side. Side two. I've never seen a soldering iron get glowing red hot from the whole stem. Ah, it's almost too hot. So this one here is solid as well. And I would imagine that uh, that soldering iron, if you were to turn it on and off, it would give you some sort of a middle ground because full on is, is pretty hot. I, I didn't think I'd be able to solder this cable, but I did. So now you can see I did exactly what I wanted. I did a pretty good job when this thing's hanging. I can't lift it with one hand, but uh, it's going to do that kind of a triangulation and it will self-balance, which is good. I like to be sure that uh, where I hang things, especially putting in that much weight, that I actually do hit wood. You can tell the change in sound. That's a, that's a uh, board right there. And so then to be sure, use a little bitty device like this. And you could, if you can find a screw along the way, then you will know for sure. There's one right there up at the top. Let me show you. Okay, after you've narrowed down the vertical with knocking, and then you come up with uh, magnetic stud finders are my favorite. See there? I like the way that they operate because I can go back and forth and pinpoint exactly where that thing is. It's right there. So then that will tell you where the stud is, and I made the smallest of mark that I can erase, actually making more of a black mark scuffing this thing on here. So now I need to find a bottom segment, and I'll know my vertical line. Okay. Where was it? There it is. So now I have my inside and outside spots, and I can draw a straight line and I can put that screw in anywhere along this line and I pretty much guaranteed to hit wood. All right, here's a little trick for finding where this thing hangs without having to move it around. If I look down the side, put myself a little piece of tape out here, that will give me the mark that I need to be able to tell where the hole is going to go. All right, so we found our spot. I had this balsa unit help me. And this is right in between the two arrows that I have. Right on the money. So I'm going to go in here with 
and not a screw. <laughs> okay, now one thing I got to be sure to do is not go straight in. I want this at an angle about maybe uh, 30 degrees or so. I don't know. That with there, it's natural grade for the mirror is to go towards the wall and not away from the wall. <laughs> Well, I went in about the depth of an inch. All right, now if this thing was going to have any kind of vibration or something, I would probably put some tape on this. You know, it might be a good idea just to protect that cable anyway. I'm going to put some tape on this. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is overkill. <laughs> well, it's my mirror. All right, so here we go. I'm going to put it on like that, bring it around and tape it on itself, and then finish it around. I should have done it in the same direction as the thread. So there we go. I now have it with a protective covering. It'll probably just all bunch up. Here we go. All right, judging from the balance. Another job well done by the Mighty Mouse. Thanks for watching, have a great day.